Hi, this is Larry Watlington of Keep Cyber Simple. Okay, as we've been going through this progression of courses, now we want to get into a part that I really love teaching. It's part of our cybersecurity risk management framework scenario. I've broken this up into two, to two parts, to two uh, separate courses, just to keep it short and digestible. Now, what do you may say, what is this about? Well, well, if you've worked in the business of cybersecurity, especially around the federal government and many other agencies, we always deploy some type of a framework. It could be COVID. Uh, it could be uh, many of the other types of frameworks. The one that I'm teaching more familiar with is RMF, Risk Management Framework. Now, many times, you know, see, this is a six-step process, but we, we talk about these and it, we, it, we make it sound so technical and so in-depth. But really, you know, what we do here is no different than what we do in life every day. Hence the word keep cyber simple, nothing new under the sun. So when we look at the risk management framework, there are, there are six, <clears throat> six steps. And this first module, we're going to cover steps one, two, and three. Steps one is categorization. Step two is selecting controls. Step, step three, implementing controls. Then we're going to go into part two uh, in, in the second part of this. So when we to, to help, hopefully, to explain this, this process, it takes us back to risk. Everything we do in security is based on risk. And just a little refresher, what is risk? The likelihood of a threat agent taking advantage of a vulnerability and the corresponding business impacts. Whether it's somebody breaking in your car or someone trying to uh, steal some type of information, it's all based on risk. It's based on the threat, it's based on the vulnerability, and what is the likelihood of exploitation, okay? Now, I'm saying risk, that, that, that it ties all of those together. Vulnerability, threat, likelihood of exploitation. <clears throat> and we talked about before, when we talk risk, we have to talk about the risk response strategies of avoiding risk, transferring risk, accepting it, mitigating it, and deterring it. Uh, deterrence is one that we didn't really talk about in our previous class on this. Avoiding it means get rid of it altogether. You don't, don't want to have uh, the uh, likelihood of being in a car accident, or not so much being in a car accident, but your car being uh, damaged or vandalized, you get rid of the car. That gets rid of the, the, the risk. If you still need your car, and you're concerned about it being vandalized, what do you do? You buy insurance, and that's how we transfer risk. Then there's a certain level of risk that we always have to accept, because I, we could have a new car, it could have insurance on it, but still there's uh, some things that can happen that even the insurance may not cover. What we try to do really is mitigate as much as possible from a cyber security perspective. That's what we're looking to do is mitigate as risk as much as possible. Scenario we're going to walk through here in a second. It walks through how we take that methodical six step program process called risk management framework to mitigate, to identify and mitigate our risk with respect to information systems and how we deter. Meaning how do we make things less attractive? You may hear it sometimes talking about uh, reducing uh, your footprint, okay? I mean, to make yourself, make uh, your, your assets less attractive for someone else to want to uh, attack and to take advantage of those. Mitigation and deterrence. Okay, so this scenario has nothing to do with what we typically think about from risk management framework, the way it's probably taught many times in a very sterile uh, business-like environment. This is a scenario of my parents wanting to get a new computer. My parents, and they, somewhere or another along the way, I guess they came to my house and saw my iMac. I'm a Mac guy. And they wanted a new iMac computer. That's what our scenario is built upon. Now, so when we look at this computer, right, we look at any uh, information system, there are vulnerabilities. What type of vulnerabilities exist in a regular home computer? Well, you could have network and system issues. There's physical, environmental, you know, that, you know, hell storms. There could be many things, you know, a hole in the roof and it gets wet. Environmental. And then there's unintentional insider threats. What do I mean by that? Like my mom and my dad, who are not the most highest tech computer users or most literate computer users in the world, can become their own worst enemy. And it could be their own insider threat, just from lack of education, lack of training, and not understanding some of the, the, the ramifications. So here's the vulnerabilities. Now let's look at some of the threats. We have external threats. What type of external threats that could be? It could be, here again, someone trying to hack into their system. Vandalism, someone breaks into our house, their house, and could steal this computer. Uh, untrained users, that's a threat. Let's see what we just talked about with my parents. And that could uh, exploit uh, and, and make them an insider threat, but unintentional. So we have an asset, we have vulnerabilities, and we have threats 
that are trying to exploit these vulnerabilities. So our goal in this little scenario is to reduce the likelihood of a threat taking advantages of a vulnerability and causing damage to my parents' new computer and the resulting impacts of that, okay?